right, so we're getting our day going here in Revelstoke, British Columbia. Uh, I uploaded a hotel review. It's actually a motel. Hotel, motel. I actually googled the difference, and this is classified as a motel. Because it has an entrance right there to the outside, right there. And there's my truck in the background there. Can you see it? Not this blue thingy here. Behind it, there's my truck. There it is. I like to keep an eye on it. So, uh, yeah, you can go back, check out my motel review if you want. I uh, had fun showing you around this little place. But this is where I'm staying for the next three days. And uh, so I delivered the machines up to a resort, Glacier House Resort, which is just, I guess, north of here. And it was too high up in the mountains. I didn't feel comfortable staying up there because it was snowing literally like half a foot an hour. So I'm thinking, hmm, half a foot an hour. And if I'm here for three days, that's a lot of snow. Yeah, and the guys there were getting mad at me already because they didn't like the big trucks up there, right? Uh, the guys who dealt with the parking there. Uh, he's pretty much telling me that the snow plows are going to come through there twice a day, and every time I'm going to have to run out to my truck and move my truck for them so that they could plow. And they didn't really have a safe spot for me to park. I thought I was safe, but they didn't like me there. They were, like, kind of grumpy. They were. I was not impressed with the attitude of the guy dealing in the parking lot at the Glacier House Resort. Not impressed. He was rude and very mean, and he did not understand trucks. I'm like, where else? Like, I was thinking, I should say, thinking. Like, where else do you want me to park? Like, I was already way off in the back corner against a snowbank, right? Wasn't good enough for him, so whatever. I'm not going to go on and on about that. I wasn't impressed. So my initial opinion of the Glacier House Resort would be negative because of that one guy dealing with the parking. Okay, if you got someone like that, that's your first impression when you show up to a fancy resort. <laughs> I don't want to stay around there. So, anyways, I decided because of that guy to come back down into town and stay in the motel in town here in Revelstoke. First off, because of that guy. Second off, because I didn't want to get buried in uh, like eight feet of snow. I didn't want to be constantly moving my truck. And I already had to chain up to get up to the resort. So, oh, it was just a hassle. I said, you know what? I'm going back down to town at the bottom of the mountain. Down here is probably like two or three degrees Celsius, high 30s in Fahrenheit. So everything's melting and it's, it's just, I feel better down here. Anyways, because I was just going to sit around and do nothing there anyways, right? So that's my story of that. And I uh, thought I heard something in the bathroom. That was weird. Where's Diesel. Diesel. Oh, he's over here, like right by my feet. Of course, you're always by my feet. I thought you were in the bathroom. He likes to sleep in the bathroom in hotels. Weirdo. Weirdo. Yeah, you won't deny it. I know. We're both weird. So, yeah. I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. I'm just getting getting going here. I woke up at about 10 o'clock. Uh, local time here, Pacific Standard Time. So it's noon at home. And I talked to my friend uh, John for about an hour on the phone. And uh, yeah, now I picked up the camera. It's time to start vlogging. That is like the loudest helicopter I've ever heard in my life. And it keeps buzzing the town every half hour. Now he's getting quieter as he gets closer. What in the world? No idea what he's doing. Like I said, that was a pretty quiet pass. So there's the truck. This is the hotel. So me being the genius that I am, Walk myself out of the room when I came to show you that ho that uh, helicopter. Oh, I had to go to the front desk <laughs> to get a spare key. Oh boy! Did you miss me, Diesel? <laughs> Where'd you go? You left the keys inside here. I knew you couldn't get in, you idiot. 
You can read all of that from his look. <laughs> uh, you're more, man. You lock yourself out. Yes. Yes. I locked myself out. I was so excited to show you that hotel. That, uh, oh, I keep trying to say hotel. I was so excited to show you the helicopter that's been buzzing town. Like, And it wasn't even that good. Before, I honestly thought he was going to land on the roof of the hotel. That's how low he was flying. And he goes over here every half hour. And I'm thinking, what are you doing? What are you doing? The resorts are that way. Like, I know he's like uh, circling the mountains to make sure that, uh, I'm sure he's first aid or something. In case of an avalanche happens, right, he'll be first on the scene. Or if someone gets hurt on the slopes or if a snowmobiler gets hurt, he'll be the first there to airlift him out of there. So he, they're always circling the resort area here, right? But the resorts are way over there. Why are you like buzzing my hotel every half hour? Like right over the roof. Like if, if he comes that low again, I'll try to run out there with the camera. Except this time I'll try to remember to take the room key with me. Because literally I was laying down on the bed before and it was shaking the walls his rotor blades, that's how low he was to town. I, I don't really care, it's middle of the day, but I'm like, whew. I was low, I thought it was something worth showing in the vlog, but ended up locking myself out of the room. <laughs> what these, though? Who's there? There's somebody out there. Is there somebody out there? Do you want to see who it is? All right, here we go, buddy. Here we go, I got you. Who's there? Who's there? Who dare have to go? Who's that? Who's that? No barking, Diesel. No barking. We're in a motel. We gotta be quiet. Because if you're not quiet, you know what happens. <laughs> he knows what this is. <laughs> This is his bark collar. I never put it on him, but uh, he was trained with it. <laughs> Look at him. These don't want the collar. Do you want the collar or are you gonna be quiet? <laughs> See, now all I do is I use it as a threat to uh, get him to be quiet. Never actually use it on him. But if he would get completely unreasonably loud, which is completely undiesel, he would have to wear the collar again. But he knows what it is. <laughs> right, Diesel? I'd never have to put this on you. Right? <laughs> You're a good boy. Do you want to look out the window again? Are you going to be quiet this time when you see somebody? Oh, yeah. Okay. Grab you under there. Here you go. Who's that? Who's that? You see anybody? You see anybody? Whew. I'll be say hello to the camera. Say hello to the camera. <laughs> Put me down! Put me down! There they go again. There they go again. Look how low he is. Really? That is the sixth time today. But I brought my key this time. <laughs> At least I didn't lock myself out this time. But seriously, like... How low do you have to fly over town? The resort is ten miles away. Six times. I bet you they do this every day. Could you imagine living here? I would get so frustrated. You'd probably get used to it after a while. Sort of like... Living by a train track, you get used to it after a while. But I think it is completely inappropriate to fly 300 feet over a town again and again and again and again and again. That may just be me, but I think it's inappropriate. It's very loud and very obnoxious. Like it's like I didn't get the camera out in time, but you have to understand the noise this chopper is making in this town. Like this. I put my hand against the wall here, and you can feel the walls shaking. That's how much noise that chopper is making every half hour going over town. You can't even enjoy a relaxing afternoon. Whatever. 
Maybe I'm just whining. Still having fun. Whatever, I don't care. Right, Daisy? We're still having fun. <laughs> <laughs>